What makes a cake a breakfast cake versus a dessert cake? It's all in here. You just gotta, gotta believe in it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Melissa Clark. I am a food reporter for the New York Times and I'm going to make three one bowl cakes. And the reason I can make three different cakes for you today is because one bowl cakes are the easiest cakes. They are speedy, they're convenient, and they're so satisfying. They're just like the perfect thing to whip up whenever you wanna whip up a cake. I'm gonna make three different one bowl cakes a blueberry crunch cake. It's like a coffee cake. It has pecans and demerara sugar on top, and it is full of blueberries. A one bowl cornmeal pound cake, which is baked in a loaf pan. And this is great because you can slice it and it looks just like bread, which means you can toast it and eat it for breakfast with butter on it. Finally, I'm going to make a one bowl chocolate. Should we call it a secret ingredient cake? a chocolate secret ingredient cake. And it is baked in a round regular cake pan. It's fudgy, it's light, it's got a little powdered sugar on the top, and it is a celebration in a cake pan. A one bowl cake isn't just a recipe. What I'm going to show you is a concept. Almost any cake that you make can be turned into a one bowl cake. Okay, so you were probably thinking, that woman is making a one bowl cake. Why does she have 15 bowls on the counter? And I'm going to tell you why. Because my producer insisted that I pre-measure everything in order to make this video look a lot better and go smoother. So this is all pre-measured. If this was my house, I would have all the packages out, you know, like the canister of sugar and the canister of flour. And I wouldn't have any bowls, and I would put them directly into this mixing bowl. So don't blame me. This is still a one bowl cake recipe. In my house it is, and in your house it will be too. Another thing you might notice I have a scale. I love using a scale. I find it so much easier. And maybe I can convince you too, because you just add all the ingredients. You don't have to actually mess up your measuring cups. So there's even fewer dishes, no measuring cups, just a bowl, a whisk, and a spatula. A traditional cake recipe is going to have you have one bowl for your wet ingredients and another bowl for your dry ingredients. Well, you can skip that whole dry ingredient bowl as long as you stick to a certain order of adding those dry ingredients to your wet ingredients. Because the important thing about this is you need to make sure that your baking powder and baking soda and your salt are really well distributed into the batter. I just add it straight to the wet ingredients before I add the flour. And then I can mix it in really, really well. The salt dissolves, the baking soda and the baking powder get well distributed, and then you add your flour. Try it with any recipe. As long as you are careful with this, it will work. This is a blueberry pecan crunch cake, and it's a coffee cake, basically. It's like a giant blueberry muffin. So first I have my sour cream. This is my melted butter. I'm give this a little mix, and then I'm gonna add my eggs. You wanna make sure that your melted butter is cooled before you add the eggs, so the eggs don't scramble. Oh my God, this already looks like icing. Four eggs. So I'm just gonna whisk this together just until everything is smooth. I don't have to worry about beating in air because this is a liquid fat cake, so it's not about trapping the air like you would with a creamed butter cake. Vanilla extract, add at this point, I'm going to add the salt it's going to dissolve in these liquid ingredients. And this is my baking soda and my baking powder. And if you do this, if you really take your time and whisk it super well, you don't have to worry about mixing it with the flour first. This is freedom, people. One bowl cake freedom. So cinnamon, could use ginger, just something to make it a little spicy. And then the flour, you just want to mix it in until there are no white streaks remaining. Okay, now that is a lump. Get it. Now I have my blueberries. Just use a spatula to fold them in. I have greased my pan and I lined it with parchment. Because I'm not using frosting, I want to make sure that there's like a special, special something on the top. So I'm going to use just demerara sugar and the pecans, and it makes it crunchy. It's what makes it a crunch cake. You can use any nuts. Uh, I've made this with sliced almonds. is really beautiful and delicious. Walnuts would be great. And that is it. I'm gonna bake this at 350. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to make the cornmeal pound cake. And because this uses a liquid fat, it's pretty much one of the easiest pound cakes you'll ever make. I have sugar in this bowl and I have a zester, 
and I'm going to add some citrus zest. You don't have to be precise at all. In fact, the full name of this recipe is the most adaptable one bowl cornmeal cake. You could flavor it with spices. You could use cinnamon and cardamom, my favorites, or ginger. I don't know, give me some ideas in the comments. <laughs> I wanna hear. Now I'm gonna do a little aromatherapy. I learned this technique from Dory Greenspan, who's one of my inspirations. She's a great baker. If you take the citrus zest and you rub it around in sugar, it flavors the sugar really well and it brings out the oils of the zest. So you're getting a lot of uh, citrus flavor. And oh my God, when you do it, it smells so good. It just smells like, I mean, I'm walking through a citrus grove. Okay, not really, but it smells like just deliciousness. So you wanna add your fat next. I'm using olive oil, but you could use any liquid fat. And now I'm gonna add my eggs. Now I have some yogurt. Even though this has the citrus in it, I'm still gonna add just a little bit of almond extract, just a few drops, because I love almond and citrus together. And also a little bit of nutmeg. So you can see it's the same exact structure as the other cake, liquid ingredients. Then you have your, your leavener and then Last, the flour. And because this is a cornmeal cake, I'm gonna use a combination of cornmeal, either fine or medium, don't get the coarse, and flour. This is actually an eight and a half inch loaf pan, but you can use an eight inch one or a nine inch. Whatever you have is gonna work. See, it's adaptable. For the last cake, I'm going to show you how to make my one bowl of chocolate secret ingredient cake cocoa powder that's already in the one bowl that we're gonna use, add some chopped up bittersweet chocolate. And now this is hot coffee. I'm gonna resist the urge to whisk quite yet, because we have to let the hot water be hot. If I whisk it, it'll cool it down. I'm just very impatient. And now I can just mix it up and the chocolate is gonna be melted. Okay, are we ready for the secret ingredient? Dermal. Mayonnaise. I know, I know you're thinking that's disgusting in a cake, but this is a traditional um, depression era recipe. That actually doesn't make it sound any better. Um, the thing about mayonnaise is that if you think about it, it's got eggs and it's got oil. And eggs and oil are the foundation of so many cakes, right? And it has it already in the mayonnaise. You don't taste it. The mayonnaise just disappears and just adds, you know, it's really about texture, not about flavor. So this cake just tastes like chocolate and it is moist because of this mayonnaise. And it's super convenient because you don't have to crack eggs, you don't have to measure out oil, you've got it all right here. The first time I ever had this cake, um, I was taking a food writing class and the professor, who's a great food writer named Betty Fussell, brought in a chocolate cake to the class and said, guess the secret ingredient. I had heard about it, I'd read about mayonnaise cake and I knew Betty's work and I knew that she was interested in this kind of historical cooking. So I was like, mayonnaise, and you know, that made me, I, like, I was the one who got it right. So it was very exciting. And since then, I've taught a few food writing classes, and whenever I teach class, I always bring in this cake, and I tell my class, okay, guess what the secret ingredient is. And um, sometimes people get it, sometimes they don't. So now, if any of you ever take my food writing class, shh, don't tell. Vanilla extract, or you could use a shot of bourbon. In this cake, that works really, really well. And finally, the flour, and the flour is always last because you don't want to activate the gluten. If the thought of using mayonnaise in a cake really does not sit well with you, use a half a cup of oil, like a flavorless oil, and two eggs instead. It's not as fun though, but it will work. It's just a nine inch round cake pan, um, greased and lined with parchment, and I'm gonna bake it at 350. Okay, so these are all one bowl cakes. They're all incredibly easy, but they're also all incredibly different. And that is what is so cool. The possibilities are endless and really delicious. And this one is mine. Mm. It's still a little warm. Oh my God, could use more butter. <laughs> <laughs>